Welcome to the Warframe Weapon Encyclopedia, where today we're checking out the Helio Core. You can get the blueprint for the Helio Core from Cephal and Simeres for 75,000 standing, and to build the weapon you have to put in 20,000 credits, 700 polymer bundles, 1200 rubido, one morphic, and a fully built gamma core. And to get the blueprint for the gamma core, you either need to finish the Uranus to Neptune junction, or you simply get it from the market. Now, the gamma core itself will take 20,000 credits, 2,500 alloy plates, 650 plastids, 400 circuits, and two argon crystals. The Helio Core is a Mastery Rank 9 hammer that does primarily impact damage damage with only a little bit of puncture and slash on the side. It is relatively slow with an attack speed of 0.833, but it does come with very high crit chance of 38%, a standard crit multiplier and mediocre status chance at 12%. That is not all though, because the Helio Core has one of the coolest unique mechanics in the entire game, because killing an enemy with the Helio Core will scan them. This is amazing because it's a very fast way of filling up the codex and it will also get you genetic material if you kill a Feral Kavat with it. Now because of the stats of the Helio Core, I would recommend going with with what I would refer to as a hybrid or light build, where you basically just focus mostly on crit, but you add in a little bit of extra status via drifting contact and one dual stat mod. The combo I like the most is to run Voltaic Strike with Prime Fever Strike for Corrosive and then just Molten Impact for a bunch of extra heat. This gives you 24% status chance, so you're gonna land the status effect roughly every 4 hits. Now with this setup, you can easily take the Helio Core into sorties, which is fantastic, because it basically just covers the entire game, so you can scan wherever you want. I wouldn't recommend taking it into Steel Path though, because the damage falls off pretty quickly after level 100. This is simply because the damage distribution is not great. Doing primarily impact is not good, especially on a melee weapon where we don't have things like internal bleeding. Now, I also want to quickly talk about the attack speed, because while it might seem very bad on the stat screen, I mean 0.833 is very low, it's actually not all that bad if you're using the stance that matches the polarity which is Crushing Ruin. The animations you get with Crushing Ruin are actually pretty fast, so as long as you're using Berserker Fury on the weapon it doesn't feel slow at all. Now while this isn't the only weapon that can scan enemies for you, it is in my opinion the best one. So I would basically recommend it no matter what. It's not the strongest melee weapon in the game, the damage distribution is pretty bad and all that, but the fact that it can scan enemies for you is just too good. It's also really fun because, you know, you are most likely gonna use Crushing Ruin with it, which is one of the most fun stances in the entire game, so not only does it make scanning faster, it makes it a lot more fun as well. So start working on that Simiris reputation, because this weapon is absolutely worth picking up. It's one of the few weapons that are different in like the best way possible. The sheer usefulness of it, the utility, is good enough on its own, and the fact that you can use it all the way up until sorties, including sortie 3, is just a nice bonus. And that is pretty much all I wanted to say, so I thank you very much for watching. As always guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful, and I will see you some other time. Bye bye.